Welcome to Southwest Florida Real Estate Update, hosted by local Realtors, Jim, Michael, and Morgan York of the York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty. Our show will bring you the most up-to-date information on the local real estate market, featuring the leading experts in the real estate field. Hi, and welcome to the Southwest Florida Real Estate Update. I'm Michael York of the York Real Estate Group. And today we're joined by our host, Jim York, and his guest, Don Ross Jr., President of Ross Title and Escrow. Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. Well, Don, thanks Jim. for coming back. <laughs> it, was, it was a long wait. <laughs> I know. Let's, uh, we're going to continue on a part two sure. of another show, okay? But okay. Uh, let us, tell us about, about yourself. Uh, my name's Don Ross. I'm uh, an attorney here in Naples. I've been a member of the bar since 82. I have a master's in taxation. I'm counsel for Downing Fry for 25, 30 years. One of the owners. Uh, own Ross Title and Escrow. We got eight people. Uh, my manager has been with me over 30 years. Uh, her daughter, 10, 20 years. Her, her, her sister, 10 years. And I got a niece who's 22, three years. So it's a it's a family operation. You know, we we return phone calls. That's a pet peeve That's of mine. That's right. Yep. Uh, and uh, we we do an awful lot of closing. So I, I know. Hopefully, we do a decent job. Well, you do a wonderful job for our clients, <coughs> and you're part Thank of you. our team. So Thank you, Jim. Part of t part two of a previous show sure. okay, that we did was we had some customers email us in or write in on different questions, and today we're going to talk about two of them. Sure. One is a developer. The lady wanted to know, you know, before they sign a contract with a developer, right. should they ha look it over or, you know, what, what, what's <laughs> the pluses so. and minuses? Do they get a time to look it over because they're pre <laughs> they were pressuring them to sign, you know, because they said there were oh some my. incentives for them to, uh, you know, for closing costs or whatever it is. Sign here and don't read it, huh? So uh, <laughs> can, uh, I know we try and or have you look it over sure. uh, most of our contracts and we try and get a, a copy, blank copy, so you can do that before it's even filled out. Well, I, I read all these things for free and right. you know, whether I do any work for them or not, mm -hmm. um, I, I figure if you do enough good things like this, you'll, you'll, you'll make a living, you'll, yep. you'll do fine. But uh, to answer your question, um, you shouldn't sign at all until you have somebody who works for you, who's on your side, i.e. somebody like yourself or somebody who's an experienced realtor. You know, if they're looking at golf course communities, you know, that's your specialty. Right. Uh, they should have, plus you're a contractor. Right. Um, get somebody with experience. It costs them nothing. It doesn't cost them a dime. In, in most cases, uh, these buyers are from other parts of the country, other parts of the world, and they do not know how things work in Naples. Yeah, and they don't know that they're, when they go into a community without right. a real estate agent, um, and I'd like it to be us, okay, right. my son, daughter, or I, right. is that they don't know when they sign the registration form, they're giving away their rights to be represented, right. even though they're just going in to look at models. And it, and it costs them absolutely nothing. Nothing. Not, not a dime. We're paid I mean, by the developer. You're paid by the developer. The developer's going to pay the same fee in most cases, no matter what. Right. It's not going to change the price of the house or the condo, whatever it might be. So uh, the better question is, why wouldn't you have somebody? Isn't that the truth? Well, what's the negative? Right. Is I, there a negative? Well, I think that people don't know they're giving away their rights when they sign that registration. But there's, there's absolutely no negative reason yeah. to having somebody on your side at all. Yeah. Uh, so to walk in there blind when you, you, you're you not from this area, you haven't done this uh, up to number of times. Right. I mean, uh, you know, I've lost track how many times you've done it. Yeah. Uh, is is And you're spending the kind of money they're spending. That's right. It's, it's kind of... Uh, not prudent is the polite way to put it. Not the best thing a business person might do mm -hmm. in investing their money without walking in just stone blind. Uh, so yes, you, you want somebody who's experienced to go in with you. You want somebody to review the agreement with you. Uh, these developers down here, uh, a lot of them are national, and the contracts are like this thick. Compared and to ours right there, right? <laughs> I think ours is too thick, but yeah. their, theirs is ridiculous. It's a small phone book, and it is, it's a yeah. lot of legalese. They deal with the Interstate Land Sales Act, a lot of federal statutes. They might be written by attorneys in other states. That's true. And, and, and you get a team of lawyers put together to write a contract, you're going to have an opus. Yep. You will have an opus with yep. sentences that are the length of a page. Mm -hmm. So you, you want uh, 
uh, somebody who does this for regularly, like yourself, or uh, you know, just somebody who does it regularly, and, and mm -hmm. obviously you want an experienced attorney to review it. Exactly, you have to. You, you have to, because there's so many, mm -hmm. once you sign that, it's usually one-sided, right? I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of <laughs> funny. I mean, I, I, I get a lot of these, and I'll get the Illinois attorneys, and and, and the New York attorneys, and I have family who right. practice law in New York, <coughs> and, and when you're dealing attorney to attorney, you, you can be a little blunt and crude a little uh -huh. bit, but, you know, have you read it, Don? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, what do you think? It's garbage. That's I, right. I cleaned it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's garbage. Right. It's totally pro-developer, but, you know, here's the reputation of the developer. Here's what you want to look for. Here's what you want to ask for. Uh, occasionally they, they have some hot button issues that they want uh, and with the national developers in my experience anyways you might get concessions on two or three things so you pick your priorities which ones are the most important to you uh, you point out uh, pitfalls uh, and, and they, they have an opportunity to ask you what's customary in Collier County Florida versus New York or Illinois or Connecticut or California or wherever it might be and now, if it's a local developer, and you and I had one, yep. uh, the buyer happened to be the, one of the leading litigators in the state of California. True. Pretty scary client. Yep. So, <laughs> so, you know, that, when you have a local developer, it, it, you have a better chance of making some changes. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's a national developer, uh, the large developers nationwide, the contract was developed elsewhere, they won't let you touch the contract, they might let you do an addendum to it with two or three tweaks. Mm -hmm. But you need somebody like you, you and me, really a realtor and attorney, to go through the, you know, the, the covenants. So if it's That's a condo, right. the, the, the use restrictions, uh, the financial conditions, you know, the things that would affect their use of the property. Yeah, I know we just got a listing uh, a while back and we didn't sell it to them in the community. Sure. And they didn't have a really a real estate agent and they're selling because they said the covenants are just too restrictive for them. Well, my, my, my father at one point was looking at moving into a, uh, a HOA here in Naples. He lives on, used to live on Marco, and he's from New England. Mm -hmm. He's used to things a certain way. He's a builder like yourself. Mm -hmm. And just the thought of having rules on when your garage door can be open and whether you can have a basketball hoop right. at the end of the exactly. driveway, he yep. said, the heck with that, and he, he decided not to do it. So I make a point of going over use restrictions as some people have hot button issues mm -hmm. uh, and, and the financial part, but then I recommend heartily that they read the whole thing. But those two areas are where the most customization happens. Our next question here is, mm -hmm. I'm purchasing a property in Naples and mm -hmm. I was wondering, what are my closing costs as a purchaser? Well, here I'm gonna give myself a plug. Uh, if you go to Ross Title, in the lower right hand corner, there's uh -huh. a, a, a star you can hit and it'll give you a quick estimate on closing costs. Mm -hmm. You plug in the purchase price, your, your loan if you're getting one, and it'll give you all the doc stamps, intangible taxes, title insurance, settlement fees, Every and all day. that stuff. So you, you know, for, for, the agents use that when they're trying to get a listing on the weekend mm -hmm. or a, a buyer wants to make an offer, but they're not gonna make the offer until they know how much Right. Or the seller's not going to accept an offer on the, until they know they how know much they're going to get. Right. So here's a ballpark figure because you don't have all the prorations and everything on the weekend. Uh, so you, there's my gratuitous plug. But in the NABOR contract, <coughs> which we talked about uh, in the first segment, mm -hmm. uh, there's standard E as in Edward and F as in Frank. Right. It's the same in the as is and the standard NABOR contract. You go right to Edward and Frank, mm -hmm. and E is seller's instruments and expenses, and F is buyer's instrument and expenses. So for a property here in Collier County, the big items for the seller are commission, right. documentary stamp tax on the deed, which is $7 per thousand, mm -hmm. so in $100,000 it's $700. And then it talks about all the various instruments that have to be prepared by the seller, the bill of sale, the, the warranty deed, there's estoppel letters, um, tenant estoppel letters if you have a lease that's being transferred with the property, uh, any assessments prior to the contract being fully executed, the effective date, right. um, FERPTA withholding, 
and that's basically it for the seller. Now for the buyer, if the property's in Collier, uh, they pay title insurance, which starts out at $5.75 per thousand, then it gradually reduces as it goes higher. It's the promulgated insurance rate set by the Department of Insurance. It's negotiable, mm -hmm. but on smaller transactions, say it's $300,000 or so, there really isn't that much of a profit margin for the title agent, so th they're not going to get uh, a con concession because it costs a certain amount to right. produce the work. Uh, but on larger deals, you might get a concession. It just depends upon the deal and what the uh, buyer wants the title company or me or whoever to, to do. Mm -hmm. Usually there's a lot of extraneous work they want done. Right. Uh, but the buyer's major fee is the, is the title insurance, uh, surveys, the inspection fees, any resale fees, transfer fees, capital contribution fees, those are all paid by the buyer. Now under NABOR, if the property is located in say Lee County, um, the seller pays for the title insurance, but the buyer picks who does it. Right. So it's a, it's a little twist. If it's in Lee or Charlotte, the seller pays, but the buyer picks. Right. And that's always a delicate thing. You know, if the buyer, if the if the the uh, selling realtor calls me, and they ask me what the costs are, and it's in Lee or Charlotte, right. I say, well, here's the situation. The seller's going to have to pay this, but your client's going to be able to pick who does it. Right. And they have to decide: Does the other agent know this? Right. You know, if if they find out after this is signed, it might affect how the transaction goes because right. they're going to look foolish in front of their client. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you want to give the other realtor a heads up, or, or what does your client want? But th that one makes me a little nervous. You know, with the far bar. There's just a block you check, seller selects and pays title insurance, or buyer selects and pays title That's insurance. Nice. It's pretty clear and simple. So this one is a little more tricky. Uh, all the inspection fees, that's on the buyer. Sometimes you get these inspection reports that recommend another inspection. Right. That's the buyer's responsibility, not the seller's responsibility. Uh, the buyer can do whatever inspections they want as long as they don't do anything invasive. Right. Uh, and they do it within the appropriate time period. And we talked about on another show that you can limit it how many times they can go in the house, true? You can limit it. They, they can go in as often as they want. Let, let's say the standard neighbor contract, they, they can, um, within that 15 days, they can have 4,000 inspections. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. But they got one walkthrough. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes ask to come in a second time or a third time because they're measuring for drapes That's and right. things yeah. like that. Uh, and if the transaction had gone smoothly and there's a big deposit and everybody's right. being Reasonable. human to each other, right. exactly. <laughs> then I recommend to my sellers, reciprocate. If they're treating you well, do the same. The, the golden rule, be, be nice. Yeah. Uh, but if they're being a nightmare, because some people think they can use the walkthrough to do their inspection. Right. And they can't. They can't. They can't. You know, so if the buyer's being difficult all along, sometimes they'll just say, no, you got one walkthrough, that's it. You got 60,000 down, I don't have to give you more. Far bar, you can have more than one mm -hmm. walkthrough. So I, well, Don, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me, Jim. We'll see you it. next month on another update, Absolutely. okay? And thank you for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thinking of buying or selling a home in Naples, Marco Island, Bonita, or Estero, Florida? Think of the most experienced York Real Estate Group, associated with the number one brokerage in Southwest Florida, Downing Fry Realty, which produces yearly real estate transactions of over a billion dollars. Jim, Michael, and Morgan make up the York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty, with over $275 million in sales transactions, along with offering over 25 combined years experience in the local market. The Yorks can offer the experience and trust you need in a Realtor. Call them today at 239-273-6727 or visit their website at www.naplesyorkrealestate.com. Looking for a real estate closing agent in Southwest Florida? Ross Title and Escrow has over 25 years experience and has closed over 20,000 residential real estate transactions. 
Donald Ross Jr., president of Ross Title and Escrow and a practicing attorney in the state of Florida with a degree in taxation, is here to service your needs. Call Mr. Ross or one of our four closing agents for a free consultation today. 303-926-1700. 303-926-1700.